today is the 11th month, 24th day of 2020. Uh, I remember how everybody was predicting that 2020 was going to be the jubilee and how wonderful and everything was going to be and that kind of stuff. And I, I don't know for sure that we've seen that. Uh, of course, to be alive today is, is, a, is a great gift. And we're online. Uh, you can see that... Uh, I won't be playing the guitar. I have this wonderful cracked wrist. You can see you're good and hear you're good. Okay. Linda says you can see me good and hear me good. We'd like some acknowledgement from some other place. You probably n would not want me to sing at all without my guitar. My guitar is the only thing that makes my singing a bearable. And uh, again, this is Thanksgiving week, 1124, uh, uh, 2020, uh, and uh, we're just stalling, uh, and we're glad for everybody that will get on board. While I was at church, I can usually, there's Tyler, thank you Tyler, and you can hear me okay. Uh, we've been praying for Tyler. Tyler has several in his family. Uh, Betty Kasky needs prayer. Uh, his sister, Estel. Uh, Estel uh, needs uh, a prayer. Uh, we also want to pray. Tyler had a shoulder replacement. He won't be able to play the guitar for a while. Uh, welcome aboard, Sue. Sue is one of my daughters. Uh, don't mean to take away from her dad, but she's one of my daughters and appreciate uh, Sue and her family. Uh, they were our family for eight and a half years. And, uh, and so we, we, we're just stalling. Usually I'd be picking the guitar or singing, but I, uh, I have a cracked uh, bone. Uh, I, I, I fell, not this week, Monday this week, but Monday last week was Linda's birthday, and she wanted a fire pit. I, I don't know. I don't know what she wanted one for. She hasn't lit a fire in it. Uh, hello, Lisa. A and... Uh, it's just sitting out there. It's about 200 pounds, and I got it out of the Flex, which is a station wagon, but once I got it out of it, I could not move it, so I left it sitting behind the car, and uh, I, I went out to take food to the neighbors and some different people. I made spaghetti that night and uh, uh, rolls, and whatever else was with it, I don't remember. And again, we're just waiting until a few more gets on board. Uh, I, it's one of the few times I can say, I, I very definitely heard something say, leave the porch light on. And I, I talked back to it. I said, I've lived here 31 years. I know where the steps are. I know where the cars are. I, I know all that. And then after I shut the door without the light on and it's dark, we don't have a street light within a quarter of a mile of our house, maybe further. And, and uh, it's very dark. And uh, I walked down the steps and I, I was taking it very cautiously. I actually turned my feet sideways. Hello, Beverly. It's good to see you. Uh, and Beverly is, is a great uh, grandma uh, there. And uh, anyway, I, I started walking. I forgot about this 200-pound uh, fire pit. I tripped over it. I fell. I landed on my left side. Uh, I, I bruised uh, really bad. My uh, 
ribs on my left side. I'm left-handed, uh, most of you know that. And uh, I said I was going to take it off and play the guitar tonight, and Linda told me I wasn't going to. Uh, and uh, she's probably right. But uh, uh, there. Hello, Linda and Charles Combs and Pam Gerard, uh, my sister. So we're going to be getting started. We are, I think it should be in the corner someplace, but we are Faith Assembly of God, P.O. Box 331, Smith Grove, Kentucky, 42171. Let me say that one more time. We are Faith Assembly of God, P.O. Box 331, Smith Grove, Kentucky, 42171. Uh, we, we live way out in the country. Our church is out in the country. We can't not... We can't get a signal at church. We, we paid and had a system put in the church, and uh, it, it was so low speed that uh, we kept telling them to take it out, and they said it'd get better. It never did, so finally we had them taken it out. Hello there, Ann. Uh, praying for you and that situation there. But I, I broke down and went to the doctor yesterday and was x-rayed and uh, have a hairline crack in a bone right about here. When I got up, there was spaghetti all over the place. Four or five servings of spaghetti in, in the to go things. And I, I slipped and fell. And this time I landed on my right side. I uh, did hurt. Uh, my both my knees and my ankle and somebody said quit falling I probably did not plan on falling in the first place uh, and I probably if the light had been on I saw the fire pit I would not have fallen uh, that's one of the joys I guess my mom was 67 when she died in the last couple of years my mom would fall on a regular basis and Probably a lot of us got uh, aggravated at her falling. I, I found out you don't fall because you wanted to or because you planned to. It, it just happens. I also want to say I'm very glad that Chewy came home. Uh, Linda was gone to Missouri, and uh, our neighbors are shooting guns. It's deer season, and they practice and stuff. And they shoot into something. I call it pyrite, but it's not pyrite. They shoot into it, and it sort of it goes off like a little stick of dynamite. And Chewy hates uh, uh, gun shots and fireworks and stuff like that. And uh, he was gone that day and that night and the neighbor called five miles down the road and said uh, we've seen on the computer that your dog is missing our grandson Matthew uh, put it on the computer and uh, and so uh, I went and it was Chewy uh, he, he looked wild he'd been through cut grass he was green his hair was all matted together, came home, brushed him an hour, uh, gave him, actually gave him two baths. And so Chewy's home with us. And uh, if you would like to say hi, Chewy, would you say hi to everybody out there? Uh, Chewy's Linda's boyfriend uh, there, and he's laying down uh, next to me. I, I don't know why. Usually he's next to her, and we're going to get into the lesson. Sorry, you know, singing uh, my my wrist, my left hand, which is what you chord with and stuff, uh, hurts. Uh, my my ribs have been absolutely killing me. I can't sleep at night. The pain's so bad laying down, and. Uh, all of those issues, but that's neither here or there. I just want to say thank you, God, that it wasn't any worse than it was. 
And if I had to hit my head on the back of the car while I was going down, it might have been a different issue. So here we go. We want to talk about choices. And we are Faith Assembly of God, P.O. Box 331, Smith Grove, Kentucky, 42171. Those have probably heard that's in Kentucky, but most of my people are not in Kentucky, and several of the people are not even in the United States. But our governor has, again, closed down our churches. Uh, we were allowed to have Sunday morning. If the service was already planned, uh, you could have it. Well, our service was already planned, and... Uh, uh, so we had Sunday morning service, not Sunday night, and we can't have service again till uh, December the 20th. Uh, big budget churches, that, that might not hurt real bad, but it is our small country churches, which is what we are. Uh, Smith Grove does not have a red light or a green light in it. Uh, if you go out of town, we do have a yellow blinking light. Uh, we really felt like we was up town when that came along. We do have a post office that the boxes stay open all night. I hope that impresses you. And and so here we go. We uh, we there's Treva. Hello, girl. And. Uh, and Ann said hi to you, Chewy. Chewy's taking it easy over here. And uh, I want to talk about choices. I, I talked to you today from the prayer room at church. I can't believe I was getting a signal. And I got a signal for about 30 minutes. And, and, and then it cuts out uh, there. But, but I just shared. I just rambled. I, I call that rambling. And... Linda, I've lost a mouse. Is Chewy laying on it? Uh, Chewy? Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. You, you weren't laying on it. Uh, the, of course, we've been telling everybody that uh, uh, Linda hit me with the iron skillet. Uh, and we put pictures on Facebook to prove our point. So here we go. Let's talk about choices. Thank you for joining in. Vijaya, it was good to see that you was able to take your mom. Your mom and dad are really good people. And uh, the, I know your dad's been gone for years. I did get to be with my dad Thursday. Uh, I drove to Indiana, and then I drove from Indiana to Dad's. Uh, I, I want to talk about choices. I, I got up this morning, and usually I, Linda lays my clothes out unless I, I fuck. Oh, there goes Chewy. Unless I, I just go on strike and, and I don't do what she tells me to do. Uh, she had my shirt laid out, my pants, and, and she lays them out. Um, I probably picked stuff that, that she doesn't like. and I, I wore bibbed overs to church, bibbed overalls to church Sunday. She had a suit laid out for me, and I thought, wow, this Thanksgiving week, I, I just wore my bibbed overalls to church. I, that's my favorite outfit. But we make choices. We make choices what shoes we wear. We make choices at what time we get up. We make a choice to take a shower or bath. We make a choice about what kind of shampoo that we use. We 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 just full of, of choices. Uh, I, I got a glass of chocolate milk today. I, I love chocolate milk. Again, that was Linda's choice. She brought it to me, and I, I really liked it. But we are a, a product of choices. I, I'm reading Baby Bible. Two more chapters, 
and I, I'll finish. I, I've had five books to read. Uh, I, now, after the two more chapters, which I will read tonight before I go to bed, I, I, uh, I have four books left in the whole Bible to read, and, and I write notes, I, I draw pictures. You saw that this morning, and if when Linda comes back this way, if she will bring it, I, I will show you baby Bible. Uh, it's something I've done for both my sons. It all uh, six of my grandchildren. I, I, I wrote on every page. I draw pictures. I, I write family history. I, I do all of those things. But that's my choice. I, I don't have to do that. And this will probably be the last, unless my sons pick up this tradition. This this will probably be my uh, last my first great-grandchild, but it'll probably be my last time uh, of doing this. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know. That's very difficult to hold in that hand. Uh, so, uh, I've had this joy of doing baby Bible, and uh, I see the glare on my glasses, and, and there is a secret someplace uh, and Linda says don't mess it up it's F something or another but uh, I, I probably will just leave the glare on there uh, but choices you, you make choices you make all kinds of choices I've told you you put your hands together like this my left hand I, I put on top most people put the right hand on top. That might not be a choice. That might be uh, inherited. The kind of earlobes that you have attached or unattached is uh, an inherited trait. The ability to curl your tongue. I can curl my tongue. Linda can't. That's an inherited trait. The color of my eyes uh, are brown. Uh, that's an inherited trait. Uh, I, 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 I have, but most of the things in life are not inherited, but they are choices. What kind of mood have you been in today? How did you talk to the people? Did you raise your voice? Did you holler? Did you scream? Uh, yeah, that, all of that's choices. What you ate. I just took to my neighbor's uh, pork chops, fried potatoes, fried pork chops, pinto beans, and cornbread, and and uh, two Miss Debbie cakes. And my neighbor's an old guy. That was a choice that we made today. Uh, I took him food yesterday. Uh, I was taking him food when I, I fell. And I called him. I was bringing it, so I had to get up and redo the food and, and, and because they were expecting it. You make choices. You make choices which side of the head are you going to part your hair. You make choices whether to color your hair or not. You, you, you make choices of, of what you eat, how much you eat. You, you make choices. I, I, I know we tend to blame everybody else but you decided what mood that you would be in today. You decided that. I want us to talk about the choice of thanksgiving. Giving thanks is 102 times, just those words, thanksgiving. 102 times in the Old Testament, 72 times in the New Testament. Thank God for computers, huh? God loves his people to have a grateful or thankful heart. It's an attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. Uh, I, I put on our sign this week, I, I change it every week, but I put on the sign this week, have an attitude of gratitude. Uh, but are you, on average day, thankful? 
Now, a lot will be so concerned over Thanksgiving, over the turkey, or over the ham, or over the potatoes. You, you, you know, I, I, I'd rather have a bologna sandwich and peace than to fuss and get together and fuss and argue and debate. And, of course, this year, uh, uh, lately especially, we, we've not heard a lot of Thanksgiving. We've heard politics and people fussing over politics and people who's one and who's not one. And, and, and we hear all of that. Uh, most of you know, and several of my friends don't like it, I, I don't get into politics. I'm, I'm very sorry, but I don't do politics. I vote. I've never missed voting but one time in all of my life. And I had a preacher's meeting in Crestwood. And by the time I got there, the polls was closed. But I vote. Uh, but politics, I, I've not been called to preach politics. I've been called to preach the gospel. And uh, I'd like us to turn to 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16. We bought some equipment, Larry Carter, to do live stream at church. But again, we have to do it from home. But we could throw the verses on the wall there that we can't hear. 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Three little short verses there. First uh, Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Uh, rejoicing uh rejoicing is a choice joy is a choice and i guarantee that 90 percent of you out there that's not living a life in joy blame somebody else for stealing your joy no you sell your joy uh the devil can't take your joy Another person can't take your joy. Only you can take your joy. Rejoice evermore. It's a choice. It's a, will you rejoice half of the day or will you rejoice, uh, uh, you, you know. Uh, and I agree with what Brian Hogan just said. Uh, he, he said, we need to get back to loving each other. Uh, and and try and I, I can't figure it out. I don't understand. I don't even try to understand. I just trust. I trust God. I, I remember when John Kennedy won in 1960. Uh, uh, churches were yelling, uh, we're going to hell in a handbasket. He's a Catholic. We never had a Catholic president before. I, I, I remember Obama. I remember them saying Henry Kissinger was going to be the Antichrist. If you add his name and the numbers together, it adds up to 666. You know, I've heard it, but I don't swallow it all. I just trust God. Nehemiah 1.7, I'm not going there. Linda didn't bring me the Bible, so I can't go there. Uh, but First Thessalonians... 516, rejoice evermore. It's a choice. Pray without ceasing. That's a choice. It's a choice. In everything, give thanks. That's a choice. Does that mean in bad times, give thanks? Yes, that's what that means. When your arm is killing you and the pain is, is bad, what what you going to do? Uh, I, I did two nights take Tylenol, just regular Tylenol. It hurts so bad, but but I'm I'm not big on that. That's that's a choice, and that choice can lead you deeper and deeper and deeper. Alcohol is a choice. Smoking is a choice. H have you ever heard the doctor say to somebody? If you open another can of beer, I guarantee that you're going to die. Have you ever heard a doctor say, if you smoke another cigarette, you're going to die? 
So you go home and you light up another cigarette and all your family gathers around you and lights up another cigarette. Are, are we slow learners or what? In everything, give thanks. I laid on my back 20 minutes. I couldn't get up. Nobody was home. I couldn't get to my cell phone. Uh, and and uh, I just laid there. At first, I had me a little pity party. Tried to survey what was wrong. And I started looking up and I saw the stars. I saw the dipper. I saw the North Star. And, and I just enjoyed as much as you can enjoy laying on concrete when it's cold. I, I, I just enjoyed the moment. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. You, you know, people fuss and fight over who they married. They didn't have to marry that person. It's a choice. It's a choice. Anger is a choice. Tempers are a choice. And many people, many people blame everybody else that they're angry or that they're sad or that they're mad or that they're whatever. Depression is a choice. Now, now wait, don't jump off a cliff. There is clinical depression from chemical imbalances and things like that. I'm not talking about that. But... We, we can focus on what we want to, but the verse goes on to say, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The will of God, a, a lot of us are looking for the will of God. God, I, I want to be in the center of your will. And God says, okay, it's my will that you give thanks, that you have gratitude that you're grateful some of us are grateful in the past tense but not today uh, we don't understand about this election we don't understand and and i'm going to go to the book of luke the 24th chapter and i, I know most of you don't have a bible there or whatever uh but the, you know, if we put an ED on the end of a word, what that means. If we put an ED on the end of a word. ED means, when you put it on the end, it means past tense. I, I wonder what happened to us that somehow we're not thankful or we're only thankful once a day or we're fussing that day of thanksgiving what what hinders us from being thankful uh it's easy to hear somebody and not hear them i've i've had in the last week i i've corresponded with people and they said things that i never i never said uh, they very clearly said things I never said. And, and I came back to them and said, where'd you get that from? I never said that. I, I never said who would be the next president. I, I, I never said for you to do this or for you to do that. That's totally up to you. It's your choice. But there's these two guys that had walked with Jesus. They heard Jesus teach on a regular basis. They, 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 they walked, they knew Jesus, they knew what Jesus said, but somehow they didn't pay attention to what he said. And in Luke 24, 11, these two men are walking down the road from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and as they're walking down the road, they're, they're down in the dumps. They've made a choice to be discouraged. They've made a choice. This historic event has just happened, and it has allowed them to get down and depressed and down in the dumps. See, they had put their hopes in this man, Jesus, and they killed Jesus up on the hill there, Golgotha. It's amazing. It's still there. You can still see it today, that place of the skull. 
they took Jesus down off the cross and Jesus borrowed a grave. Never heard of anybody borrowing a grave before, but he just needed it for a little while. Uh, uh, but they, their hopes was all gone. It says, but we trusted. If you'll see that, there's an ED on the end of it. Means we used to trust that this Jesus was going to be our answer. We, all of our dreams was in this man. And now our dreams are crushed because that man's in the grave. And the demons were laughing all over the world. We've got God's son in the grave. Uh, it's over. It's over. You, you know, somebody wrote years ago, I don't like to drop names, but somebody wrote Satan is alive and well. That's absolute falsehood. I probably know what they were trying to say, but I think they were saying it all wrong. Satan's not alive and well. He has a terminal disease. He has cancer. He has tuberculosis. He has, he's going to be one angel is going to come down and bind him and throw him in hell. He's not alive and well. I'm here to tell you today, I don't know what's going on, but I do know I trust God and God is in control. He's in absolute control. And Jesus is alive and well. But these guys walking along, down in the dumps, having a pity party. That's the smallest record player in the world playing My Heart Bleeds peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for you. Uh, and here they are. They're all discouraged. They're all, why? Because they had seen a distorted truth. Why they thought... While they thought their dreams was crushed, the third day comes, and if you'll see as they're walking, they say, and it says in Luke 24, 21, but we trusted, they're, they're talking to this strange man as they walk, but we trusted uh, all of our hopes, everything we had was invested in Jesus, the Son of God. But we trusted, we don't trust anymore. And they, they say to this stranger, this is the third day. <laughs> Thank God for the third day. We had our hope in, in this guy. And, and as they walk along and they talk, they're, they're not thankful. They're not appreciating. They're not, because they're believing the distortion of the event of the death of Jesus Christ. Jesus told him, boys, I'm going to die. Boys, on the third day, I'm going to come again. They'd heard the reports that the lady said that uh, uh, the grave was empty, but they thought maybe somebody stole the grave. Their trust was past tense. Some of you right now are in an uproar in your family, in your politics, in your predictions, and, and all of that. You know, I haven't heard or seen anybody say I was wrong. Uh, my my dad is a Church of God pastor. He's been a Church of God pastor since 1955, which would make 65 years. I'm Assemblies of God. I've pastored 40 years. They closed the Church of God down where I lived in Virginia, and uh, the next closest church was the Assemblies of God, so we started going to that. My older brother was in the Disciples of Christ, the Christian church, for years in different places. And uh, and then later, he was in the Methodist church. Uh, he pastored 26 years before he passed away. And somebody asked my dad, why, why are you in three different churches? And my dad said, well, we didn't want to put all the eggs in the same basket. Uh, I, I believe that today you are in a valley of decision. 
If you would go to Joel, the third chapter, verse 14, and you can do it later, or you can trust me, I promise you I won't misquote it. But Joel 13, 14 says, Multitudes, multitudes are in the valley of decision. You are going to make a choice whether you have joy, whether you rejoice, whether you cry, whether you pout, whether you whatever. My arm will get better. My, my ribs will get better. The scabs have already came off my knees, so uh, uh, they're getting better. I, I, I believe that you are going to make a choice you already have made it today, you're going to make it tomorrow, and you're going to make it the next day, and you're going to make it, you're, you're going to make a choice to overeat. You're going to make a choice to gripe and complain and grumble. You, you're going to make a choice. You, 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 I, I sat in the garage. I, I went to church and prayed at the war room, and you can watch that on Facebook. This will be on, on uh, YouTube uh, when Larry Carter gets it put there. But uh, why are we allowing things to dictate the moods? You, you know what a bad mood is? A bad mood is the way that you hurt yourself. You hurt other people. Uh, Linda, could I ask again for baby Bible? Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. You're going to make a choice every day of your life. Will I rejoice in today? Uh, how many times in the book of Philippians, four chapters in the book of Philippians, Paul keeps saying over and over and over about joy. God designed us to operate in joy. Nehemiah 8.10, the people have been crying and crying and crying and crying. And, and uh, they're getting sick crying so much. And the preacher stands up on the podium. His name's Nehemiah. Nehemiah, the 8th chapter, verse 10. Nehemiah tells the people, quit crying. It's a time to rejoice. It's a time for joy. I believe you can have joy in a funeral home. I, I, I believe you can have joy in the hospital. I believe you can have joy as somebody's dying. I, I, I believe when you spill the milk, I, I, you can have joy. Clean it up. Let the cat break it up. Let, let, let something... But we are in a valley of decision, and we're letting everybody else dictate to us whether we're going to have joy, or whether we're going to act defeated, or whether we're going to walk in victory. In the midst of, listen, I've lost many battles, but we're not going to lose the war. Thankfulness and praise go together. Quit crying and praise the Lord. And this is a week of Thanksgiving. And, and the only person I know that would have the right to be not thankful this week is, are turkeys. Uh, turkeys probably aren't real, uh, aren't, aren't real happy uh, about Thanksgiving. But you are in a valley, and you are going to decide whether you walk in joy and peace and love. Uh, I, I wrote in the back of baby Bible here. I, I, I wrote something, and, and I, I you, you've heard me say a Z in times. Uh, you've heard me say. Hurt people hurt people. And how true that is. I, I, I don't care who you are or where you are. Hurt people hurt people. And those people that let hurt people hurt them need to realize while the hurt person hurts somebody, 
it was their choice to decide whether they accepted that hurt or if they realized that that person. But, but I wrote this in the back uh, of Baby Bible. I, I, I wrote, hurt people hurt people. Maybe the person that's giving you a hard time is having a hard time themselves. Why not try understanding? I believe that you can have peace right in the middle of the storm. The winds are blowing contrary to your little vessel and the water's coming on the ship. It's not how much water your ship is in, it's how much water is in your ship. And it may appear that you're sinking, but if you just wake Jesus up, uh, people that's having a hard time is probably giving you a hard time. If you could be mature enough to realize that being thankful and praising God is a choice. I've been in the room of somebody dying and taking the guitar and playing till my fingers were falling off and singing. And what a beautiful visitation of the Holy Spirit as somebody graduated. I had a cousin named Dean, and Dean was in Lexington, and they called us that he was dying and uh, in intensive care. He'd had a heart transplant. He'd done very well and had some other issues come up, and he was dying, and we were standing in the room, 15 people, and maybe 20 people at times, some would go in and out, and somebody said, you know what we would always do? And uh, I think Kim said that, and I said, what? She said, you know we would be singing, and so we closed the glass doors, and we just started singing. And heaven come down in that intensive care room at UK Hospital as our cousin passed away. And and as when it was all over and we was out waiting in the lobby, I'd say 50 or 60 people came by and said, you'll never know what that singing did for us. There's certain things you do when you give thanks, and singing is one of them, and praise is one of them. I, I don't understand. God's been good to me. God never tripped me. God never knocked me down. God, I did that. If I'd left the porch light on, I wouldn't have done that. It's my fault. It wasn't God's fault. But my God says in Romans eight twenty eight that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And good comes out of bad. Good comes out of bad if. That, that promise doesn't go to everybody. Good goes into bad if you don't love the Lord and you're not serving him and, and you're not uh, 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 trying. Yes, Tyler was was there in the room and and I mean it was an absolute kiss of heaven and when we got done singing I, I believe it was Tyler leaned over and whispered in Dean's ear which was his brother and said to him Dean it's okay if 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 you see the light go for it uh, but God has a plan God has a plan and God's plan does not hinge on Democrats or Republicans. And, and, and I know Republicans are mad. I know Democrats are mad. I, I know people that's mad all over the place. God said that he would give us peace. John 14, 1. Let not your hearts be troubled, imperative command. You don't allow your hearts to be troubled. A lot of you listening to me right now are troubled about the turkey or the ham or or you're troubled. I, I don't know what we're going to do. I, I told Linda, you know, our governor said stay home. Uh, might be wise. I, you, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. 
But I do know that we can't have a troubled heart. And I also know if you have a troubled heart, you can blame the devil for your troubled heart, but he didn't have anything to do. You can blame your spouse or your children or your dog, or you, you can blame anybody you want to blame. It's not their fault. If you have a troubled heart, you made the choice. John 14 if you'd skip down through there and go down to about verse 27, you, you know, we got more stuff than we've ever had before. I, I told the story about being a freshman in high school. I had a pair of wingtip shoes. I never have liked wingtip shoes, but that's what Dad always picked out for us. And I had a hole in the bottom of both shoes. And Dad saw that and he cut out a piece of cardboard and put it in his shoes. Yeah, we, we had a rough time in life. Yeah, the, we didn't have a lot of things, but we were happy. We had a big garden. We canned stuff. If mom said go under their bed, the, it was green beans and corn under their bed. Uh, under other beds was, was uh, okra or tomato juice or or the taters. Uh, uh, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. Do you remember when you put $2 worth of gas in your car? <laughs> $2 don't buy you a gallon now. It says John fourteen twenty seven. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Today, if you would accept it. You know why we don't have peace? Because we're telling God what to do. I started off the sermon the other day. What would you do if Jesus didn't answer the prayer the way you told him to answer it? What if Jesus answers your prayer different? My brother lost a toe, and uh, before he died, and it, you know I was afraid it would concern him. My grandmother on my mom's side lost several toes, lost all of her toes, lost part of her feet, part of her legs. I was afraid my brother would really get discouraged. He made a joke out of it. He called himself that he was an Indian. And he said, I'm Charlie Nine Toes. We've just got to make the best. I I, I was watching on, on some channel the other day. I was watching them playing poker. And, and this one hand, this guy bet a million dollars. And somebody else bet a million dollars. And then they both raised... And there was a 0% chance of the guy that was making all the bets winning. But guess what? He won. He won the hand. He won $3 million on that one hand, and he was a loser. Uh, what do they call that? Buffalo win? What do they call that, Linda? Uh when you bet and you don't have the win in hand, buffalo's not the word. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, God has a plan for you, and he would like to bring peace to your home. He would like you to forgive those people that have hurt you. Let not your heart be troubled. And Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. It's not your peace. It's his peace. Not as the world gives you, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. And John fifteen eleven says, These things I've spoken unto you, that your joy might remain in you. And that your joy might be full. God designed you. Could you imagine taking a 2020 Corvette. Have you seen them? They're beautiful. The engine's mid-engine now. They, they make them nine miles from our house. 
But can you imagine getting a motorcycle, a dirt bike, and jumping over the muddy hills and all that kind of stuff and racing a Corvette? You would never put a Corvette on a mud bog to race. You'd never do that. It was not designed to do that. Uh, Corvette's probably not designed to run on real rough roads. It's designed for speed and smoothness. You were designed by God to maintain a full joy tank and that it remain, that it stay there. And if you don't have joy, peace, hope, uh, thankfulness, it's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. John 16, 24. You've asked nothing in my name. But if you'll start asking, you shall receive that your joy may be full. If, again, make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I, I saw somebody put on Facebook peanut butter and mayonnaise sandwiches and never tried that. I don't know if they were serious or joking. Uh, I, I do love peanut butter and cheese. It, it, it's not how fancy your meal is. It's not how... how I wonder who we'll share the, our meal with. Uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and he has a design on today, that you will rejoice and be glad in it. Are you going to waste the day fault finding, griping, complaining, murmuring? I think murmuring sounds like a bad word. Jude 1, 16. These are murmurers, complainers. I wonder if he's talking about us. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaks great swelling words. Boy, that's what's going on today. Wow. These are murmurers and complainers. What have you complained about today? Got a burnt biscuit, cut the bottom off and put honey on the top of it and eat it. Zechariah 9 verse 12 says, I'm a prisoner of hope. Oh, man. And then it goes on to say that God will render double to you. Remember when Elisha asked Elijah, Elijah said, what do you want, young man? And the young man said, I know what I want. I want a double portion of God. Uh, when I go get a dip of ice cream, I don't want one dip, I want two. When I get uh, mashed potatoes or fried potatoes, I don't want just a little bit. Get, give me a little bit more. Uh, are you a grasshopper? And Nahum 1 verse 7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in a day of trouble. I think we are walking today in a day of trouble. And, and I don't mean to make any negative predictions, but I believe our day of trouble is not going to lessen. I believe it's going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. But it goes on to say, and God knows the people that trust him. Are you going to trust God? Are you going to praise him? Are you going to raise your hands up? Uh, we, we play music in a rest home. Of course, COVID stopped it. But we play music in the rest home. And, and uh, there's this little dude that has lived his life in formal churches. And, and we play the guitars and sing and and people get happy. There was one little old lady that would shout and, and praise the Lord. And this little old man had never been around that kind of thing. And after several weeks of being in there, uh, he was in very bad shape. But he would just barely raise his hand up a little bit. And a week or two later, his other hand started going up. And as... He learned to praise the Lord. His hands would get higher and higher. I surrender all. 
I played cowboy uh, enough to know that. <laughs> yeah, 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 I have. God is going to make a way for us. And if you want to pout and doubt and fuss and moan and groan and do all that kind of stuff, little boy was flying his kite so high that he got so high that you couldn't see it anymore. And a man come by and the boy had his string and it, it was going up and going up. And the man said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm flying a kite. Can't you see? And the man looked up and said, no, I, I can't see your kite. How do you know it's up there? He said, I know it's up there because I feel it tugging on the line. He said, if it wasn't up there, that string would fall down. I can't prove a whole lot of anything. But I do know when I feel the tugging on my heart that God's asking us to give thanks and to praise his name. To praise his name. Don't be a pessimist and complain all the time. Don't complain all the time. Just let God. Just let God. Well, my time's come and gone. I'm sorry about no music if Linda's not here when I do it next time, I'll take this off and, and we'll pick a little bit. Uh, but God be with you through this Thanksgiving season. And know it's your choice whether you're thankful or not. If you don't have a turkey, that's okay. If you don't have ham, that's okay. It's okay. It's not about turkey or ham. It's about giving thanks. And could I close with this saying, how long has it been since your spouse? Have you thanked them? Have you praised them? Ha ha have you encouraged them? It's not just about God. How long has it been since you said something kind to your pastor, to your leaders? How Listen, if Biden is president, He's my president, and I'm going to pray for him every day. Yeah, I'm an American. I love this place. I've been in Syria. I've been in Jordan. I've been in Israel. God's God. Will you praise him? Will you praise him? And, and that person that's causing you trouble is probably having trouble. Wouldn't it be wonderful to try understanding? They wouldn't know. They, they wouldn't know what to do. Say something good about them. If you can't say anything good, tell them they're a good whistler. They, they can whistle good. Uh, well, God bless you. Uh, thank you for all the prayers. I will tell you that last night was the first night that I got a good night's sleep. And, and uh, there's a lot of other people a lot worse than I am. A friend named Mike Morgan uh, I found out he had a brain tumor surgery and, and going through all those things. Uh, a, a friend named Ed Morgan fell a year ago and injured himself and has been in the rest home. Jack Carroll, an old preacher, uh, is in a rehab facility. That there's people, there's a Linda, Linda Sanders in the Indiana. Uh, we met with her Thursday and just had the best time. Uh, don't know, don't know what's going to happen, but I praise the Lord. Will you come and go with me to my father's house? And let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Read what David says. Read the last two or three chapters that David wrote. How many times he says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And he really had a tough time at times in his life. Well, God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. And if nothing else, would you find you a corner and go over and start thanking God? I've got eyes and I can see. I can hear. I can talk. My hand moves. I know Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. I don't have a religion. I have a relationship. 
Jesus is my best friend. God bless you. Have a good night. And I saw where uh, there's Beverly again and Debbie Brandon. I saw where uh, that Patty, well, Patty, we've been praying for you. And I saw that we had a request back down the line there. Uh, Treva Cole, a uh, request prayer for me. Uh, amen. God, will you touch? Will you touch every person out there? Encourage them, God. And let them know if they are discouraged to change the choices that they're making. God, help me have an attitude of gratitude. Good night. <laughs>